Susan Black, uh, President and CEO of the Conference Board of Canada. Very nice to see you here today. It's lovely to be here. So you have some news for us um, about the women on corporate boards. So we're doing a study that is looking at the complier explain legislation that was put in five years ago, which was the uh, regulator's effort to try and accelerate the representation of women on boards. So we're building a statistical model that's going to dig into is the, rep is the regulation really meaningfully making a change? We certainly know from the counts that the number of women on boards is going up, but it's very slow. Uh, and we can't make the association that that progress is because of the regulation. It may have happened anyway. So we're doing a deep dive into that. Do you have any sort of instincts at first, uh, any assumptions going into as to why the progress has not been uh, what was hoped for, I guess? Mm -hmm. Well, I, we do have some ideas. We'll have to wait and see if they pan out in the, in the study, but I'll, I'll share with you my views on why I think we haven't made that 30% goal that the Canadian government set out several years ago. Um, first, I should say, actually, the TSX 60, those big Canadian companies, they have hit 30%, and that's great news. But overall, only 18% of issuers uh, have women. It, the proportion of women on boards is only 18% overall. And what's more disturbing, Susan, is the fact that last year, almost two-thirds of the board seats that became open, those seats went to men. And that doesn't have to be anymore. We've got a big pool of qualified women. So I think there are a couple of reasons that happens. The first is boards of directors still tend to fill their seats from their personal networks. Right. It's, it's you, you look for people who you're comfortable with, you look for people who look like you, and of course if the majority of people on boards are already men, it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So there are ways to disrupt that, and I think that's part of what the big companies have done. The second factor I think is important um, that has played into the progress being so slow is what is the profile of a good board director? And I think there again, we tend to, boards tend to have a very narrow view. They think um, good board directors are either uh, former CEOs, all of, you know, the vast majority of whom are still men, or they think there are leadership characteristics that are important, and those tend to be male defined. So it's think leader, think male. So there's, a, there's an element of bias there when they're looking at the profile. So I think those two things together have, excel, have caused the, the slowness in what we're seeing. Do you think it also could be because um, there's a sense out there that we don't need to worry about gender equality anymore, that uh, it feels like something that, you know, we already got there? Uh, I think if you look over the last two to three decades, periodically you see that, that um, sort of that mindset come to the forefront, but I don't think we're there right now. I think we're in another one of those phases where it's a tipping point. Um, you know, I think the things that have happened around the Me Too movement that have bought, brought visibility to some of the things that women face in their lives has, has had an impact. I think also the business case for diversity is now very well documented and understood. So we know organizations that have more diversity at the top of the house have better financial performance, you know, better, higher total return to shareholder, the groups themselves are more creative, better decision making. I think that's starting to be very well understood. How much, do, how much of it would you say is attributable to women self-selecting, that women don't step forward as much as they do? When it comes to boards of directors, I don't think that's the case at all. I think it's more women don't get asked as Is much. Is that right, eh? I so do, I do. And you know, remember, we're talking about a very small pool. There were 500 board seats that opened up last year. And there are hundreds and hundreds of qualified women in this country for those board seats. Women who've had senior leadership positions across many sectors. So I don't think it's that women aren't leaning in at that level. I think it's women aren't in the pools that are getting tapped and there are some biases around what's the profile of a good director. Do you have any practical advice for women about how to get on boards? Uh, is there anything that women can feel sort of empowered to do themselves? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, so I think uh, what women can do is be even more proactive. I think it's a great idea for women who, who want to be on a board to identify which companies or which organizations they want to be a board and reach out. Tell the chair of the board of the nominating committee. Let your name be known because it takes a while yeah. to get on a board. You know, it's, it's, there's not an opening every month, right? Uh, have your board resume ready. 
tell everybody, men and women, that you want to be considered because it still is largely a networking activity. So I think women can help themselves that way. But I think more importantly, organizations have to disrupt their current practices. And there are a lot of good governance practices that if all organizations put in place, I think we would see a difference. Give me an example of a, a, good, a disruptive so, practice. Sure. Um, and the, I say disruptive, and I should say in quotes, these are not uh, brand new practices, but use a board matrix. So instead of saying, if you're a mining company saying everybody has to have mining experience and everybody has to be a fancier, look across the range of competencies you need on a board and see where your gaps are. That opens up the field to women. Use board term limits. You know, we have examples of boards of directors where you know, men have been on for years and years and years and years. Board term limits are a healthy thing for a board. Use a search firm. You know, search firms uh, you know, have, have broad networks and you can direct them to make sure that they bring a diverse slate of candidates for it. It's an order. You know, they're signing an engagement or you say, I want to see uh, racialized people and women on the slate who are qualified. Those things together uh, open up the pool for you and help, help the organization make better choices around these things. So, um, have we got time to... Uh, one more, one more okay. question. Um, all right. Um, in the spirit of, uh, sort of uh, can, can we end on an optimistic note? What, do you, uh, what gives you hope? What gives me hope is that uh, the TSX 60 has gotten there. So big companies often role model for small companies, so they've figured out some of the magic sauce. The other thing that gives me hope is, even though the pace is very slow, it is in the right direction. It's not moving back down.